For the first 4 billion years of Earth's history, there's almost no evidence of any life significantly larger than a single cell. Then, during the Ediacaran period, around 575 million years ago, many strange fossils of complex multicellular organisms begin to suddenly appear in the fossil record. Millions of years before the arrival of modern animal groups in the Cambrian explosion and long before more recognizable prehistoric creatures like the dinosaurs appeared, these creatures were roaming the Ediacaran oceans. The origins, lifestyles and identities of these organisms have long been debated, and with these strange creatures come many surprises. This video is made in collaboration with Cambrian Science. Check out his YouTube in the description below because this guy deserves more subs. To start, the origins of multicellular life are shrouded in mystery, thanks to limitations in the fossil record. However, there is now some evidence of multicellular life prior to the appearance of Ediacaran biota. 2.3 to 2.1 billion years ago, fossils were formed that might be the earliest known body fossils of multicellular organisms. This may have coincided with a temporary increase in the oxygen levels, and it is thought that these organisms were wiped out shortly afterwards, leaving no descendants. There are also possible fossilized tracks of multicellular creatures from around 2.1 billion years ago. 1 billion years ago, fossils of multicellular red algae appear. Green seaweed has recently been found from around the same time. Around 715 million years ago, biochemical traces of sea sponges can be found. And about 650 million years ago, there's possible physical evidence of sponges as well. For most of the Ediacaran, fossils of multicellular organisms are still rare. In the Doshando Formation in China, small fossils of what appear to be animal embryos can be found near the beginning of the Ediacaran although they may instead be the adult phases of small extinct organisms of the time. As the Ediacaran went on, oxygen levels increased by about 50%, resulting in an atmosphere with one-fourth as much oxygen as that of today, and filling the oceans with fuel for a sudden explosion of multicellular life. During the last 40 million years of the Ediacaran, life in the ocean started to change more rapidly. Starting around 580 million years ago, a variety of front-shaped organisms appeared in the calm, inner shell of environments. These organisms were often made of branching tubes, and some of them possessed a strange pattern of repeating branching that was fractal-like in nature, with each branch resembling a smaller version of the branch that came before it. These particular fronds are known as rangeomorphs, and their fractal-like grown pattern is unlike anything alive in the ocean today. As time went on, these fronds, rangeomorphs included, became more abundant in the fossil record. This apparently rapid diversification has come to be known as the Avalon Explosion, the earliest known major evolutionary radiation of large multicellular organisms. Starting 560 million years ago, the rangeomorphs became less common in the inner shelf and other frond-shaped organisms diversified in their place. Around this time, traces of small burrowing organisms appear in large numbers. Paleontologists think these burrows were left by some of the earliest bilaterians, animals with a single line of symmetry down the middle, with a distinct front and back end, which today make up the vast majority of animal life. Elsewhere, the strange large multicellular organisms started appearing in rougher water close to the shore. Living amongst the frond-like organisms were many flat, bottom-dwelling creatures. They looked like bilaterians, with a front and a back end, and even possessed segmentation, like a worm or an arthropod. But looking closer reveals that these segments are staggered, rather than being perfectly symmetrical. This strange pattern is almost non-existent in modern animals. Other organisms had more radial body plans, like the tribrachiomorphs, with an unusual three-part radial symmetry. Examples of four-part, five-part, and possibly even eight-part radial symmetry can be found in Ediacaran rocks. The small bilaterian burrowing organisms were less common in these near-shore waters than in the calmer inner shelf environments. However, there are body fossils in these environments of possible bilaterians. One of them, Cambrella, may in fact be an early relative of the mollusks. 
Microscopic life also appeared in areas with even greater turbulence, like the distributary channels where water entered the sea. Some surviving rangiomorphs made this their home, as did the Petalinamids, another group of stocked organisms. Around 550 million years ago, almost all of the strange idiocaran organisms vanished from the oceans, as the burrowing organisms expanded into the near shore waters. Only the rangiomorphs and the ptalonomids remained, taking refuge in the high energy channels until the end of the idiocaran. Near the very end of the idiocaran, an abundance of small shells and shell fragments appear in the fossil record, known as the small shelly fauna. This represents a new innovation in the evolution of animals hard parts made of minerals that offer protection and structure. Many of these shells are tiny organisms like Claudinia, but other fragments are of larger organisms like the meter-wide sponge-like Namapoikia. This innovation, along with many other factors, set the stage for the Cambrian explosion, when bilaterian animals radiated into many of the groups we see today, presumably driving the remaining Ediacaran organisms to extinction. So where do all these strange Ediacaran organisms fall in the family tree of life? Are they animals, or are they more basal eukaryotic organisms? Are they mostly members of one singular extinct group, or are they extinct relatives of different modern groups? These questions have puzzled scientists for decades. It was recently found that Dickinsonia was likely an animal of some sort, as indicated by the cholesterols found in its remains. Another recent discovery was Stromatovirus sigmaglena, one of the few Ediacaran-looking organisms that survived into the Cambrian period. Even more interesting than its young age are the physical characteristics it possessed. When compared to the body structures of both Ediacaran organisms and modern groups, it appears to unite Petalinamids, Dickinsoniomorphs, Rangiomorphs, and many other fronds under a single large grouping of animals, more advanced than sponges and closer to other animals. However, these strange conclusions are not irrefutable, and we will likely never be sure of the exact relationships of these bizarre creatures. They will always represent one of the strangest and most mysterious chapters in Earth's history. So I really hope that was interesting and you learned something new from that. The Avalon Explosion as an event often gets overshadowed by its big brother the Cambrian Explosion. But as many events, it should not be that easily overlooked. This video was made in collaboration with Cambrian Science. Go watch our other video over on his channel, which you can find by clicking the info card on screen right now or by clicking the link in the description below.